spotlight the city of praise. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to be notified every time we have something to share. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again real soon. Welcome to our giving moment. In Isaiah 119, the Word of God says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God desires that we have a willing heart. What is a willing heart? A willing heart is a compliant heart. A willing heart is a consenting heart. A willing heart is an obedient heart. A willing heart is a heart that listens. Not only listen, but execute what it hears. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, God takes great delight in a cheerful and a willing giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many can look back over your life? And when I think about how he brought me over, I know that it was the Lord who brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Hallelujah. When I think about the song that's going on in the world, hallelujah, I can look back and say, this is nothing new for Jesus. He brought me out of hurt. He brought me out of pain. He brought me from a low place. And now it's no different. Hallelujah, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, he brought me. Yeah. I've been through, through the storm. I've been through, through the rain. I've experienced so much hurt. I've experienced so much pain. He's always there, no matter what the snap. He brought me this far. Only he can. Only he can. 
Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody but Jesus. I can remember the time laying in the hospital bed. The doctor said I had fluid on my brain. But at the end of the day, I had a sinus infection. Three whole days. Three whole days. Hallelujah. Nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody but Jesus. I can recall the time I was driving down Military Highway and my car slipped down the embankment three whole times. Each time I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But God, at the end of the day, I came out with a scratch on my hand. The man that came down said, Hallelujah. I thought the person in the car was dead. But God, hallelujah, but my Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. I had a co-worker, the same thing happened a few weeks later, and she's no longer here today. But God, but God, but God, but God, hallelujah, nobody but Jesus, hallelujah, and he's still bringing you. Jesus, nobody but Jesus, nobody but Jesus, nobody but Him, nobody but the Lord, nobody but the Lord. He brought me through, He brought me through, He brought me through, He brought me through. Nobody but Jesus, nobody but Jesus, nobody but Jesus. Hey, He brought me, He brought me, He brought me, He brought me. Nobody but Jesus, brought me out of depression. Pour me out of crying. Pour me out of crying. Pour me out of sadness. Pour me out of sadness. Pour me out of sadness. It was marvelous night. It was marvelous night. It was marvelous night. He brought me. He brought me. He brought me. He brought you. He brought you. He brought me. He brought you. He's bringing us through. He's bringing us through. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. He brought me, he brought me, he brought us, he's bringing us to a hot place, he's bringing us to a blessed place, he's bringing us, he's bringing us, don't give up, don't give in, he brought me, only God can do it, 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 only God can do it. The Bible said, when I'm in Christ, I'm a new, I'm a new creature. It also says, forget not Woo! the former things. Forget the former things. Neither consider the things of the old. But then the song writer says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Hey! When I think, hallelujah, of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he brought me through. He could have killed me a long time ago. I could have killed somebody a long time ago. I could be in jail. I could have AIDS, hallelujah. I could be somewhere hugging myself. But the Lord, hallelujah. Hey, but the Lord, his grace and his mercy, he brought me. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Come on, the word of God says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. For we honor the presence of God. We give him glory. And we give him honor. Come on, it's another week that God has kept us. It's another week that God has sustained us. 
Come on, it's another week that God has shown himself mighty. He's shown himself strong on our behalf. And we have come with intentionality. We purpose to bless him. Come on, we purpose to bless him. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord. Come on, the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, this has got to be personal. It's got to be intentional. You got to make the decision for yourself. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. Yes, God. I've decided that I'll keep a praise. I've decided I'll keep a thank you. I've decided I'll keep a your word. I've decided I'll keep a hallelujah. Yes, sir. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on. Come on. Somebody bless him. Bless him with a heavy heart. Bless him even in the midst of pain. Bless him in the midst of what you're going through. I will bless him. I will bless him. Yes, God. I don't understand why it happened, but I will bless him. I don't understand why it went the way it went, but I will bless him. Is there anybody here? Glory to God. Is there anybody who will say with me, I don't know why it went the way it went. I don't know why it happened the way it happened. But one thing I do know is I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I'll still give him glory. I'll still give him honor. I'll still dance before him. I'll still clap my hands. I'll still scream his name. He is. He is one. Yes, he is. Worthy to be praised. Come on, as we open this moment, I need you to set your feet, set your heart, set your hands, set your spirit with intentionality. I will. Yes, God. If nobody else does, I will. If nobody understands why I'm doing it, will how can you dance in the midst of what you're dealing with how can you dance when death is all around how can you dance when your heart is broken how can you dance when you are grieving well watch this what I've discovered is that the presence of God will enter into a room and his presence will pour the oil on my aching soul his presence will minister to my broken spirit is there anybody who needs the presence of God to minister to you this morning then open your mouth throw your hands up Make a decision that I will bless. Tap somebody close to you and tell them I will bless the Lord. I'm trying to let this go, but turn to somebody and just tell them I will. I will, I will. Oh. I will bless the Lord. Yes, sir, I will bless the Lord. And I'll bless him at all times. Come on, tell somebody and tell them I keep a praise. Yeah, I keep a praise. Keep a praise. Yeah, things transpire. Things happen. But I keep a praise. Come on, I keep one in my back pocket. 
so that even when things are going on and I'm not real happy about the way they're happening watch this I've tried to teach y'all this before but in Psalm 8 and verse 2 it says praise will steal the enemy and the avenger come on I keep a praise in my back pocket because sometimes stuff gets to happening and it's happening too fast I can't wrap my mind around it so I keep a praise in my pocket because praise will steal the enemy is there anybody here this morning who needs the enemy to stop in his tracks is there anybody here who needs the devil to be still for a moment have your neighbor and shout neighbor then release a praise praise will stop him in his tracks praise will make him be still have your neighbor and shout name give him praise Come on, come on, come on, saturate your atmosphere right now. Come on, right there in the living room, create an atmosphere that's filled with praise. Come on, right in the kitchen, open your mouth. Come on, come on, we gonna stop the devil in his tracks. We gonna steal the enemy this morning. Come on, somebody, come on, somebody. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. We're grateful that God kept us another week. We're grateful. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. And let's bless him real quick. Come on, give him glory.
Verses 43 and 44. And it reads, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin Jesus saith unto them loose him and let him go for just a few moments of time I want to share with you what I believe I've heard the Lord say and it is simply this he called you to live can, can you just type in the chat for me he called me to live come on he, he called me to live father in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise you for this moment that you have afforded us to come together, sit together, and eat of your word. Thank you, O oh God, for your word declares that the words that you speak, they are spirit and life. So we pray today that this is not just another sermon, not just another moment where our emotions are riled momentarily, but we pray that we would receive the spirit of life that flows out of your word. Father, we thank you for it and we give you praise now. We exalt you and we extol you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray and give you thanks. We say amen and amen. 
He called you to live. As we take a look at this 11th chapter of John and where we have been blessed to place our attention for this moment of preaching, we are dropped into the text after Martha has shown Christ where her brother's body is buried. She has been transparent enough with him to take the stone away from the place where she had been hurt, disappointed, and let down. She was honest enough, courageous enough to roll the stone away in front of so many onlookers who had the potential to judge her situation. She did not let the potential for judgment stop her from being transparent in the presence of her Christ. She, she talked to him and laid open her entire scenario. And the Bible says that Jesus takes a moment and he begins to pray. The Bible says that once the stone was rolled out of the way, Jesus lifts up his voice, lifted his eyes, and begins to talk to the Father. And he says, Father, I thank you that you hear me. Yeah. He, 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 he says, I thank you. Can, can, I, can I really pay attention to this text? Because this thing got me. Uh, what, the, what Jesus really prays is he says, I want to thank you that I have a track record with you. That whenever I pray, our track record says you heard me. Watch this. Th this was good to me because he says, I thank you that thou hast heard me. So in other words, th this is not my first time praying. I have spent time in prayer and I've talked to you in the past and your track record of answering me indicates that you always hear me when I pray. He says, he says, and I thank you that thou hearest me always. He says, he says, so right now, my prayer, watch this, my prayer is not a prayer to try to conjure faith. Yeah, I, I, can I talk to you for a moment? Jesus says, this prayer is really not for me. It's not because of what I stand in need of. He says, he says, because I already know that you hear me. I already know that our relationship is intact. And whenever I come before you, you are, watch this, you are going to move for me. He says, so that, that, that's not why I'm praying. That's not why I am lifting this request in this moment. He says, but because of the people, which stand by is why I'm praying this way. He, he, says, he, says, he says, I need them to know that we've got a relationship. I, I need them to know that, that we've got a history with one another. I, I need them to know that you respond for us. I, I need them to know, watch this, I, I need to set an example for them that, that if they'll turn their face toward you and if they'll cry out to you, then you'll hear them also. Watch this, G Jesus says, Jesus says, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it as an example for them, he says, that they might believe that I have come from you. He says, he says, watch this. He says, God, I'm praying in this moment because I need them to know that I'm not moving on my own. I, I need them to know that I am an agent on assignment from you. I, I, this is not something that I just decided within my flesh to do. I, I didn't show up here because I had nothing else to do, but, but I showed up here because you assigned me to be here, and because of your assignment for me to be here, there is something that you want to do. He says, so, so God, I'm praying that as a result of, of this moment, there will be an assurance. There will be a confirmation. There will be, uh, there will be an affirmation in the spirit 
of these people who are present that they might know you sent me. Watch this. He, he, he spends time first talking to God. Watch this again, but not, not as a means of building his faith and not as a means of, of, of trying to, to ensure that he was in the right place with God. No, he says, I'm praying this way because I need them to know that you sent me. I need you to do something in this moment that will solidify in the minds of this crowd, in the minds of this congregation, in the minds of this gathering that you sent me. Watch this. He, he, says, he says, God, the, the only reason I'm praying right now is because I need you to do something that convinces them that I come from you. Watch this. And, and, and the Bible says after he finishes praying, after he finishes talking to God that way, he then, watch this, the word of God says, he finishes talking to God. And after talking to God with the assurance that God hears him and with the assurance that God moves for him and with the assurance that he is sent from God, he then speaks to that which is dead. He, he now positions himself to speak to that which is dead. Can I, can I talk to somebody? Because one of the things that the Spirit of God has been ministering to me uh, over the last several days and I've had the opportunity to talk about it a little bit each day prior to even this moment of ministry watch this but but the Lord has been ministering to me that he is still the God of the Bible watch this a and that he is able to do today what we read of him doing in the Bible Ain't, ain't nobody help me right there. Church got quiet. Watch this. See, see, we have a tendency. This is this is what I began to understand. We have a tendency to read the Bible, and and even as believers, we sometimes read it as if it is a historical account of the actions of Christ. We read it as if it is purely a a, a biographical sketch of God. It is. It is just some stories compiled to give us a glimpse into who God is. Watch this. But, but what the Lord began to reveal to me through prayer is that everything you read about me, watch this, is proof of my ability, watch this, to still do what you read in the pages. Can, 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 you, can you just for a moment, can you just for a moment, I'm not going to stay here, but can you for a moment in the chat just type, he's still the God of the Bible. Come on, he, he's still the God of the Bible. Watch this. And, and the Bible says that after Jesus has spent time in communication with God, he then turns around and opens his mouth and he says with a loud voice, God, I thank you. This thing resonates with me because as I studied the text, Jesus is intentionally loud in this moment. Watch this. He, he does not, watch this. He does not call Lazarus with a reservation. He, he does not speak to that which is dead with any trepidation in his spirit. No, the, he is intentionally loud. He, he intentionally raises his voice so that everybody around him will have the opportunity to know that this was intentional. What, what God is getting ready to do is intentional. Can, can I get somebody who will shout with me right there and say, what God is getting ready to do is intentional. God, God is getting ready to move with intentionality on our behalf. I, I need you, I need you this morning to wrap your mind around it, to get it in your spirit that what God is doing in this hour, he is doing it with intentionality connected. Watch this. The Bible says that Jesus, he begins to cry out 
with a loud voice. Watch this, unreservedly, unapologetically, and unashamedly, he speaks to that which is dead. God, I thank you today. Without, without any hesitation, he speaks to what nobody else has had confidence to speak to. He, he speaks to what nobody else has been bold enough to speak to. He speaks to what other people, watch this, have felt helpless to speak to. He, he, he breaks onto the scene and per the word of the Lord, he, he says with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come on, because, because I need y'all to know who, who I came for. I, I need you to know who I was sent for. Watch this. He says, Lazarus. Watch this. He calls him by his name. He, he calls Lazarus by his name. And then he tells him what to do. He says, now that I've got your attention, come forth. Lazarus. Come on. Come forth. I need y'all to grab it. I need y'all to grab it. And, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure that much like this room just sat relatively quietly when I called for him, that's the same thing that happened in the atmosphere because everybody knew the circumstance. Everybody knew that Lazarus was dead. Everybody knew that he had been dead for four days. Everybody knew that this thing was far gone. Everybody knew, watch this, that by day four, even even Jewish custom and fable said his spirit is no longer hovering around in the cave. So, so surely by now, watch this, he is sure enough dead. So everybody has gotten silent. Everybody is waiting to see what happens. Everybody is waiting to see if, if, if this thing is going to play out the way Jesus has planned for it to play out. Or is he getting ready to look like a fool in front of everybody? If you would allow me for a moment to use my imagination imagination I can see people gathering around saying what in the world is he doing what what in the world is he trying to do now don't don't he know what he's doing he's getting ready to get their hopes up and and, 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 and it's too far gone don't 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 they, he know that he's about to get them all excited for nothing there's no possible way that this can go the way he thinks it's gonna go watch this and they have gathered around watch this not in expectation but they have gathered in judgment and speculation but then all of a sudden I'm telling you this thing got good to me as I begin to study then all of a sudden there was a sound in the back of the cave somebody said wait shh, I, I think I hear something y'all wait, wait y'all I, I hear some movement God I thank you because if you study the text and you really understand the way they were buried back then watch this because Lazarus came from a family that had some money watch this it was similar to a mausoleum of our day but the Bible says that Lazarus is inside this cave watch this that is hewn out of a rock and the Bible says all of a sudden when Jesus calls Lazarus you can hear the sound of movement in the back of the cave all of a sudden people heard this sound that sounded like somebody jumping watch this because Lazarus is still bound I'm about to feel like preaching because there are some of you who have speculated that unless people have the kind of experience that you've had with God, then it is impossible for them to respond to the voice of God. But I, I came to tell somebody that what I discovered in this text is that even bound folk have to respond to the voice of Jesus. Watch this Lazarus still bound. Hands are bound. Feet are bound. 
face got a mask, but Lazarus had to respond to the voice of Jesus. Can I encourage some parent in the room and help you to understand that no matter how far your child may seem to have gone, when Jesus begins to call for them, they gotta respond. No matter how far your husband seems to be off track, when Jesus makes the call, they got to respond. No matter how far your wife may seem to be off, when, when, when Jesus calls, she's got to respond. Throw your hands up and shall they got to respond. Watch this. I'm getting ready to go sit down, y'all. But the Bible says Jesus, he calls Lazarus forth. And all of a sudden, he that was dead came forth. Watch this. He jumped out of the grave, leaped forward, still bound, but he came. Hands tied, but he came. Feet wrapped, but he came. Face covered, but he came. Tap your neighbor and shout neighbor. He called me, he called me to live. Watch this, I still got some habits, but he called me to live. I still got some issues, but he called me to live. I still got some problems, but he called me to live. Is there anybody here? Who will agree with me that he called me, he called me to live, shout yes, Lord. But here's what blessed me, y'all. Jesus, he called Lazarus and he called him forth in the presence of spectators. He called him forth in the presence of those who would have been naysayers. He called him forth in the presence of those who didn't think it was possible for him to recover from the state he was in. But I, I came to tell somebody that what I hear the Lord say is that in this hour, he's getting ready to call you forth in the presence of your hater in the presence of the naysayer, in the presence of the one who doesn't even think you qualify, but tap your name and shout name. He called me to leave. I know that I'm not the one that you may have chosen. I know I'm not the one that would have been your first pick, but thanks be under God that he called me anyway. He called me, called me out of my dead place. He called me, called me out of my problems. He called me, called me out of the situation. Is there anybody who will shout with me that I am the called of God? I am the chosen of God. I am the righteousness of God he chose to call me because I am proof that he still works in miracles I need somebody who will shout with me that I'm still proof that God works in miracles he called me out of my dead place so that I would be a sign to everyone else that God still works in miracles shout yet Watch 
business, I'm on my, I'm on my way to my seat, y'all. And I'm going to let this go. The Bible says that after Jesus calls him forth and Lazarus comes, still bound, still dressed from his previous season. Uh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. See, see, because there are some people that God is getting ready to call forth in this hour and they're going to still have on the clothes from their last season. There are some people that God is getting ready to raise up and they're going to still have on clothes from their last season. Tap your neighbor and shout neighbor. Don't let what they're wearing trick you up. Don't let what they got on make you think that God can't use them. Don't let how they're dressed make you think that they are not of God. Tap your neighbor and shout neighbor. God shows Lazarus while still dressed from his last season. God shows Lazarus while still covered in the stuff from his last season. God shows Lazarus while he was still dressed to be buried. Who am I preaching to? God called him and told him to live while he was still dressed to be buried. God told him to live while he was still adorned in the clothes of his last season. But tap your neighbor and shout name. What I'm so glad about is that I serve a God who will call me even if I'm not perfect. I want y'all to catch a glimpse of something because Jesus calls him he calls him from the grave he calls him out of the place of death he calls him out of this horrible pit he calls him out of the muck and the mire watch this and Lazarus does not argue and say to him, but Jesus, I ain't dressed right. But, but, but Jesus, I ain't got on the right clothes. But, but Jesus, I, I still ain't had a chance to clean up yet. Watch this, Jesus issued the call and Lazarus came forth. Watch this, and then Jesus took the group of people who had been standing around speculating and spectating. Jesus says, hey y'all, I got an assignment for you. He says, your assignment in this season is to lose him. Watch this, y'all. I need you to hear what the Lord said. He said to all of those who were standing around, he said, your assignment in this season is to loose him. Watch, who am I preaching to? Jesus said to all of these people who were standing around, dignitaries, folk with high collars, folk with long robes, folk who had protocol in place, he said, sir, what I need y'all to do is loose that man. Tap your neighbor and shout name in this season. God is getting ready to use the same people that wrapped me up. The same people who covered and bound me. The same the same people 
who tried to put me in the box. The Lord is getting ready to command them to loose him and let him go. Tap your neighbor and shout neighbor. He called me, called me to live. Watch this. I'm on my way somewhere and I'm going to leave it alone, y'all. Watch this. What blessed me, what blessed me in this text is the Bible says that God speaks to Lazarus, tells him to come forth. Jesus speaks and says, come forth. Then Jesus tells those who have been standing around, he says, I want y'all to loose him and let him go. Watch this. This was good to me because Jesus says everything that you tied him with I want you to take off of him watch this see because there are some people who are dealing with issues where they have been bound but it was us that bound them it was you and I who tied them up we tied them in our bureaucracy, we tied them. In our politics, we tied them. In our protocols, we tied them. Watch this. And what Jesus says to all of those standing around, he says, is, look, y'all loose him. He says, loose him and let him go. Watch this. This, this thing, when I studied it, it blessed me because what Jesus was saying is I did not call him forth for him to stay bound by your thoughts, opinions, and the standard that you have set for him. I called him back so he could live. Watch this, y'all missed your shout cue. Because what Jesus says is, is I did not call him just to exist. I did not call him just for him to have a, a presence in the earth. He said, but I called him so he could live. Yeah. And this is what the Lord, this is what the Lord has been dealing with my heart about. He says, he said to me, he said, I'm calling the body of Christ. I'm calling them back so that they can live. Watch this. Because many of us have been bound by traditions. We have been bound by rituals. We have been bound by opinions. We have been bound by stances of people. We have been bound on so many levels. And what God said to me as I was in prayer, he says, is I've called you to live. I, he says, He says, this is what I've called the church to. I've called the church to live. I'm giving them an opportunity to not just exist. He says, but I'm calling them forth to live. And what he says is, I want to ensure that everything that has been in the way of their ability to live is removed. So he says to all of those men standing around, he says to them, he says to them, y'all loose him. Untie him. Free him from the hindrances that you have attached him. And then let him go words release him send him forth let him do as I've called as I've placed as I have put in his heart and in his spirit watch this can I tell you that it is the will of God for us to live I'm not talking about an existence and for so many of us we have become comfortable simply existing but what the Lord says is, I called you to live. And so what he has done, watch this, is he called us out of this dark place. He's called us out of the cave. And now, watch this, he is setting us free. He is allowing, watch this, the same institutions that bound us. The same institutions that were holding us. He is now called 
causing those inst entities and institutions to set us free. to come face to face with what they had done because they were the ones who wrapped him up they were the ones who tied him they were the ones who had bound him watch this now they had to be the one to untie untwist unwrap it required them being hands-on in the process of freeing Lazarus. Watch this. I'm sharing this with you because there are those in our lives that God is going to use in this hour. They are going to be hands-on in helping to free us so that we can do the will of God. Those, watch this, those who have those who have restricted us in the past, those who have tried to hold us down, those who have tried to keep us from forging forward. Watch this. God says, in this hour, I'm going to use those same people to come face to face with the bondage that they've placed you in. And I'm going to have them untie. Watch this. I need somebody to get this in in the realm of the spirit I, I, I'm telling you I almost believe that this word transcends our house but I, I just want you to hear what, I'm, what I hear the spirit of God saying and that is in this hour I want you to know that some of the same people who would not sign off on you in the past are people that God is getting ready to use now to actually validate, release and launch you forward because this is the hour where God plans for you to not just exist was not in celebration mode about Lazarus getting back up. This miraculous thing had occurred in the life of, of Mary and Martha and, and even in Lazarus's life and, and there were those who were there and the Bible says some of them were so excited, so moved that they began to believe on Jesus but then there were others who were there who were present and, and, and the Bible says that they ran back to the Pharisees and they began to tell everything that Jesus did. The Pharisees got nervous and the Pharisees were trying to figure out what to do with Jesus. But I'm telling you, as I study this, if you get a chance to read it, watch this. The Bible says that the one thing they could not deny was that Jesus was a miracle worker. They were not happy about it, but they also could not deny that he was. Can I tell you that in this season, what I heard the Spirit of God say is that he's getting ready to cause you to live in such a way that there will be people who are not happy about the life that you will live, but the one thing they will not be able to deny is that Jesus did it. They may not be happy about the fact that you have acquired what you have acquired, that you have become who you have become, but what they cannot deny is that Jesus is the one who made it possible. I want you this morning to hear my voice and know that it is the will of God for you to live. And I'm not, again, I want you to understand, I'm not talking about just an existence. It is the will of God for you to live, to thrive,
you're sitting right now and you're looking at me and you're saying, I don't know what this is. It's almost as if he's looking directly into my face. And I'm telling you that that's the will of God right now. It's the presence of God. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit who's calling you for. Calling you just like you are. And you're sitting right now saying, but wait, I ain't got it all together. I, I, I still, I'm still dealing with this and I'm still caught up in that and I don't even know how today is going to unfold for me. Watch this. It doesn't matter. He's calling you now. Come forward. Come on, come forward. Hold on, Bishop. You don't, you don't understand. I'm still caught up in this relationship. I still got this situation going on. Watch this. Don't worry about it. He's calling you forward.
the life that he has for you. Let's pray together. Spirit of God, we thank you and we praise you today for your word. We thank you for that which you have spoken and that which you've given us. Thank you that you have called us to thee. And so today, we make the conscious decision based upon this call from your word. We make the conscious decision to come forward. Still bound, but we're coming. Still got issues, but we're coming. Still dealing with some, 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 some proclivities, but we're coming. still have addictions, but we're coming. We got habits, but we're coming. We still wrestle with our identity, but we're coming. We wrestle with our self-esteem, but we're coming. We battle depression, but we're coming. We're coming today. We, we've decided that we are coming forward. We've heard your cry. We've heard your call. And we know that it's us that you're after. We know that it's us that you came to pursue. So today we make the decision to run no more. We yield. We yield to you. And we say, we're now ready ready for you to take off of us that which we need no more. Take off of us that which we'll no longer use. Take off of us last season dressing us for where we are headed and you've called us to live so we come forth in full anticipation of being able to thrive we come forth in full anticipation of being able to move forward we come forth in full anticipation of what you will do with us So, Father, we thank you now, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You today may be here, and I'm telling you what I sense in my spirit is there are those of you who can sense the call of God. You can sense Jesus drawing on your heart right now calling you out of your dead place calling you out of habits and lifestyles he's calling you and you feel him you can sense his draw you can sense him tugging on you even now come on right in this moment would you pray with me? Let's respond to his call. Let's, let's respond to what he's doing. Just say, Lord Jesus, today I thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. I thank you for what you're doing in me right now. I respond today and I recognize my need for you. Come into my life. I surrender to you. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your presence. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. I 
Come on, if you prayed that prayer with me this morning, you prayed that simple prayer, can I encourage you? Send us a text. Text the word believer to 31996. We just want to celebrate with you your decision to become a part of the body of Christ. We want to celebrate with you the fact that you have surrendered your heart to Jesus. Would you do that for us this morning? There are those of you who are also watching and you've been hanging out with us in Cyber Sanctuary and you say, you know what? I, I really believe that this is the place where God wants to plant me. I, I believe this is the house through which God desires to feed me. I, I'm telling you, there's something about this place. Every time I stream, every time I participate in worship, I sense God drawing me toward this place. Come on, if that's you. We are excited and we're grateful for what God is doing in your heart. Would you do me a favor? If you believe this is the place where God wants to plant you, you believe this is the house through which God desires to feed you, come on, would you text the words New Light, the name of our church, text that to 31996. And we simply want to celebrate with you God's choice to plant you in this house and to cause you to be the catalyst through which he continues to grow this house. We are grateful and we are thankful that even in pandemic, new light has continued to grow and we are grateful to God. Amen. Amen. Can I encourage you this morning? I want to encourage you to bring your time and bring your offerings into the house of the Lord. Come on, that's what the word of God teaches us. This is the first day of the week. And the word of God says on the first day of the week that we're supposed to bring what we have already predetermined that we want to present to our God. And if you're anything like me, God has been really good. He has proven himself and been faithful to your house. And so you've got a seed, you've got a gift, you've got an offering that you want to bring before him. And so media is going to display for you the ways that you can do that. But come on, I need you this morning to bring your tithes, bring your offerings, bring your gifts. Let's show God how grateful we are for his blessings on our house. I'm telling you, God has been good even in pandemic. He has shown himself mighty and shown himself strong. He has been a provider. He has been a keeper. He has been a sustainer. Come on. Is that your testimony too? Come on, if that's your testimony, write in the chat real quick. Come on. Tell us which one he's been for you. A provider, a sustainer. Come on. Come on. Tap. Go, go ahead. Type it in the chat. And, and testify to us for just a few moments who he has been. Come on, while we take this moment to give. Amen. Amen. Come on, lastly, just want to say on behalf of Pastor Jay, myself and our entire family, please know that we love you, that we are praying for you, that we are believing God on your behalf because we know that God has not called us to simply exist but he called us to live amen God bless you we love you enjoy the rest of your day we look forward to seeing you again real soon as we prepare to take holy communion let us be reminded of what the Lord's table represents it is a celebration of the last Passover meal that Jesus had with his disciples. Celebrating the time when the death angel came and passed over any house that had the blood of the sacrificed unblemished lamb spread on the upper and side post of the door. Since Jesus has come to be that final and ultimate sacrifice, we celebrate the work he did on the cross. His sacrifice on the cross was done because of his love, God's love for us, 
and his obedience to the cross. At this table, there represents everything that we need. At the table, there's joy and peace. At the table, there's healing and deliverance. At the table, there's strength and power. And at this table, there is salvation and wholeness. And as we celebrate communion, let us take the bread and the wine. And scripture tells us as while they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. Let us eat. And likewise, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, take and drink all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant that is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us drink. And after they had dined, they sung a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. And as we continue to think about what this table represents, we know that the sacrifice that Jesus made made it possible for us to have eternal life. God bless you.